This episode and the entire season is proudly brought to you by California Cryobank. Use code QueerFam for a free level two subscription at cryobank.com. Love is love is love on the Queer Family Podcast. Love is love. And I think it's the important part for trans people and queer people, like, is that we listen to one another's stories as well, right? So it's not right. that just that everyone else listens to our stories, it's that we understand one another's stories as well. Because it was really hard for me in the early parts of my transition when I just assumed that everyone had this really easy transition and that right. once you once you finally came to terms with being trans, that everything was going to be easier. Like mm. that you'd, you'd hit this point and things would be like, I'm me now. And it, it's not really that way in, in my transition. Like things are still really hard as I move through things. Like it wasn't like coming to this understanding and then being like, I'm free. Like everything right. is everything yeah. is easy now. Like there's still a lot of really difficult parts. Welcome to the Queer Family Podcast, the show all about family, but with gay. <laughs> my name is Jamie. I'm your host and you are you beautiful folks are tuning into the show whose mission is to uplift, highlight, normalize, and celebrate LGBTQIA plus families in all of our beautiful identities. And this episode is doing just that. Shocking, right? Shocking. Before I go into my guest, I uh, want to take a moment to thank our newest Patreon members. I'm going to say your names loud and proud. Jeremiah Hodgson, Thank you so much, Jeremiah. You rock my world. And Rebecca Egler. Rebecca, I see you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for joining my Patreon. Thank you for supporting the show. If any of you out there have a few extra bucks lying around and want to support a cause such as this, you're just going to head over to patreon.com slash the Queer Family Podcast, pick a tier, join, and start getting that bonus content. Thank you so much. And my guest today. OMG, this conversation is so good, y'all. I had the privilege of sitting down with M. Reynolds, aka the M. Reynolds on Instagram. Uh, M is a trans parent to two kiddos in a blended family. Um, and we spent a bit of time talking about M's family journey um, to parenthood and parenthood journey, but we actually honestly spent more time talking about transitions and the state of the world for LGBTQIA plus individuals, uh, particularly the trans community uh, and how scary it is in the world right now um, to show up. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really scary time to be seen. And M just has a really wonderful way of speaking and putting things in perspective. I was just really taken at how eloquently M explains and ponders things. I guess I would just say it's a really thoughtful conversation and I hope you all enjoy it. But of course, of course, before I roll that tape or before Helen and Beulah roll that tape, I have something really cool to tell you. Well, first of all, the thing that's not cool is my son is homesick today with a fever and he's right outside the door behind me. If you're watching the video, you can see that. And he's watching a movie that I just put on for him and I'm hoping he doesn't <laughs> interrupt us, but he might, he might. And that's, that's parenting life. Uh, but he is watching a movie and I have something for all of you. He happens to be watching the Paw Patrol Mighty movie that just came out was just released for streaming, and the Paramount folks reached out to me recently and wanted to offer my listeners promo codes to stream it for free. So I was like, okay, yeah, because if my listeners have kids who are anything like my son out there, they friggin' love everything Paw Patrol. So I just put it on for him. He's so excited, and I want you all to be able to give it to your kids too. Okay, here's what I need you to do to get a code. You're going to go to the review section of wherever you listen to your podcasts, and you're going to write a review, hopefully a good one, please a good one, like write, write a good review, please. <laughs> and then you're going to take a screenshot of it, and you're going to email it to me at thequeerfamilypodcast at gmail.com. The first four will get the code. I only have four codes. So capish, capas, we get it, write a review. Send me a, a photo of the review. You're going to get a code. You're going to have a really fun party with some five-year-olds or six or seven. <laughs> 
So do it. It's fun. As soon as I'm done um, with this this intro here, I'm going to go sit down and watch it with my guy because he's not feeling so well. I, before I roll the tape, I have two more. I actually have a lot of things I need to talk about in this intro. I'm sorry. I try to get them in and out, bada bing, bada boom, but I do have a couple of things I want to say to y'all. I have a little uh, ally mail to read to you. I asked for allies to to reach out and, and let me know how this show resonates with them. And boy, have the allies shown up. So this one came from Brandon. Brandon wrote, I have been a longtime listener to your podcast ever since your very first episode many years ago. Wow, go you, Brandon. And even though I am a cisgender straight male, your podcast has really helped me become a better ally of the LGBTQ plus community. Keep up the amazing work, Jamie. Oh, Brandon, thank you. I love you. And um, I love hearing from all of you, whether you're an L, a G, a B, a T, a Q, an I, an A, a plus, an ally, whatever it is. If you've got something you want to tell me, email me at thequeerfamilypodcast at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail at 646-470-1840. There are so many ways. I usually only share one listener feedback per episode because I do try to get right into the interview. And I know you're all, y'all are dying to hear the conversation I had with M. Reynolds. Um, but I have something else I want to share that I think is going to give us all a little food for thought, so to speak. I got another email from a listener named Jennifer. Um, and this was in regards to Lisa the Therapist and Dr. Mark's episode that just recently aired about, basically it was about all things donor conception, right? So Jennifer brings up a really good point that I'm sad and kind of embarrassed to say um, it didn't even cross my mind during the convo with Lisa and Mark. And so I'm going to read what she wrote. She starts out saying, you know, my wife and I love your podcast so much. Thank you for doing it. And then she said, I listened to your new episode with Dr. with Lisa Schumann and Dr. Mark Landiris, and I want to bring your attention to an issue that I think was missing in this episode. Their overarching statement that medical history of the donor should be prioritized above all else is inherently ableist, and it's ideas like these that lead us down a path towards eugenics. Uh, The U.S. already has a tragic history of eugenics and forced sterilization, of which the queer community was a target. Mm -hmm. And I want to scream from the root rooftops that disabled people like myself are no less valuable and every bit as deserving to reproduce and parent as those without disabilities. If we don't follow the lead of our allies in the reproductive justice and disability justice movements, donor choice will only become more sparse. More importantly, she says she wants to uplift all the hard work those in the disability community have done to advocate for reproductive justice so that history doesn't repeat itself. Jennifer also sent me an article uh, about centering disability visibility in reproductive health care um, that I read, and I'm putting it in the show notes for anyone else who'd like to read it. It was eye-opening for me. And yes, Jennifer, you are completely right. First of all, I do want to say disabled people can live beautiful, fulfilling lives, and they deserve to parent and reproduce. Yes. And if we are saying that, you know, donors with X, Y, Z, whatever that we deem undesirable are are ones we should like cross off our list, then we're doing a disservice to folks with disabilities and the community at large. And um, I don't want to do that. And, you know, Thank you, Jennifer, for giving me this perspective. And I'm sad that with all the talk I do of inclusion for all on the show, the voices of queer folks with disabilities haven't really been heard from on the show. And if I want to uplift marginalized communities like ours, I need to uplift all marginalized communities. And so in the name of transitions, which is turning out to be a bit of a theme throughout this episode, I'm transitioning as of right now to doing a better job of centering the voices of folks with disabilities on this little here show. And and of course, I'm going to be starting with Jennifer and her wife, because uh, as you know, in my response to Jennifer, right away, I was like, oh my God, can you come on? Because that's how I do. That's how I roll. And Jennifer thankfully said yes. And so you're going to want to be on the lookout for that um, for next season, which is coming up. And if you are a member of the disabled community, and have a queer family story that you want to share, I want to hear it. Reach out, email me. Let's hear all 
the stories. I'm serious about this and I am going to do a better job at that. This is a one, one marginalized community in our big umbrella of community that has not had a voice on my show yet. And I'm going to change that right now. So just some food for thought. If you want to read that article, check the, the show notes. I'm really happy that y'all continue to reach out to me and offer me insights that I wouldn't normally see, honestly. So appreciate it. I'm going to do some digging and learn a lot, I think. Thanks, Jennifer. All right. So that's it. It is really, really time for me to roll this tape. I have yammered on way too long. Uh, So I'm going to ask my lovely assistants, Helen and Beulah, who don't exist. And Helen is even like, there, you have lost some listeners. Get your butt moving. Nobody wants to hear it. Like Helen has that cigarette hanging out the mouth, not playing around. Helen's not real. Neither is Beulah. I can't, I don't have an assistant. (laughs) I do have Nicole who's actually going to roll the tape actually. Okay, here we go. Ladies, roll that tape. Thank you so much. (laughs) Queer Family Podcast. Love is love. Hi, Em. Hello, how are you? I am wonderful. How are you? Very good. It's always fun to take time in a work day to be able to have like conversations. So I love this. I know you're literally like in an office at work right now. I am, yeah. <laughs> Good job. And what part of the world are you in, Em? I'm in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Oh, so, Canada. Yes. Yeah, where we're experiencing, well, not shockingly, a heat wave as opposed to what people expect the cold of Canada. So Interesting. Yeah, huh. exactly. Oh, this life, this world is crazy. This world I know. is upside down. I know. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. <sighs> okay, well, M, otherwise known as the M Reynolds mm-hmm. on the socials. I know that yep. because I follow you, and that's kind of how we found you. Raw. Yes, M, you have a beautiful account where you basically just like chronicle your beautiful life. And I cannot wait to learn more because, listen, <laughs> I would tell everybody at home, if you're not following M, you got to go follow M because M is like a poet. I'm, I'm not even kidding, M. <laughs> I was reading through some of the things you put just in the copy of the post and you're beautiful. All your photos, just beautiful. And then what was it you said? I'm going to butcher it so you can say it better. But it was love all the trans people in your life so much that they cry happy tears in their sleep. Oh my God. So beautiful. And and (laughs) I'll be honest, like I, I, I very much don't even, I write them spur of the moment. Or I, I often will think back and I'll read some of the things that I wrote. Uh-huh. Like, did I even write that? Like, you did. So it it's certainly, as you said, I do remember. It's amazing. Writing that one. Yeah. Profound. That's the word I'm going to use to describe some. And it's just Ooh. the copy. You know what I mean? Like I put posts up all the time and sometimes the copy is, mm, I'm just going to write a little quick, you oh, know, <laughs> but yours are profound and poignant and I really like them. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I already told people kind of who you are, sort of not really. So now it's your turn. I want you to give us at home your 30 second elevator pitch of who you are and why you're here. And I'm going to put a timer up, but don't get nervous. It's just for fun and you can run over. I will never cut you off. It's just (laughs) literally just fun. Okay. I'm going to say on your mark, get set, go. I am M. Reynolds and I am a transparent to two young kids. And really, the things that I like talking about most are myself. (laughs) And (laughs) really, the idea that transition can happen later in life, and that that is a really valid thing that can happen. It's a really beautiful thing that can happen. And the other thing that I've realized that I really like talking about is that transition can also be really hard and difficult. And that that also doesn't negate how valid and important and lovely a transition is. And so those are really the all-encompassing parts of my own journey that may or may not apply to other people's. Um, But I think it's really important to share the pieces of my journey that I didn't see everywhere. And so that just in case there's other people out there who may be struggling with the same things I am, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they see that there are other people like me out there. Uh, like I don't, okay, even, so you, I don't know what my time was there, but I, I'm not even gonna look at it. You definitely ran over for sure, <laughs> but I don't care because, like I just said, you say so many beautiful, lovely things, and you know what? You're doing a really good service to the world, and I'm just grateful for you. Thank so you. grateful that you're out there being visible and showing up for for all of us who yeah. need it. Right? So thank you. Well, thank you. I can't wait to hear more about you. So can we like take it 
way back to little M? We can. How did we get onto the path of M becoming the M you are today in this moment? I talk about this story every time I go into therapy session <laughs> and with a new therapist. I go into the, tell, tell me, let's go back to the beginning, right? So it's, I was a um, little kid, played basically every sport possible. I was definitely a quieter kid. I mm. loved reading lots of books. <laughs> I would read mm -hmm. Care Bear books at night. Uh, I love the I, Care Bears. I love I, the Care Bears. The one part of my story, I don't know why I always like communicating, but I had a waterbed growing up. And for <laughs> whatever reason, I really like talking about having a waterbed. And because I that's thought that super that was really cool. integral. I know it really was. That and is like the, super cool. Only one in my family that had a waterbed. I don't know how I ended up with a waterbed, but I held huh. on to it for as long as possible. Because yeah, you did. It was just really cool to have a waterbed. And yeah. eventually there was a leak in it and I had to give it up. But <laughs> Dang. went through high school the same way, played every sport possible, uh -huh. was also very quiet. Went to university, mm -hmm. very quiet there, made almost no friends <laughs> in my first oh. year of university living in residence is actually where I work now. I mean, I didn't have a particularly difficult, like growing up wasn't particularly hard for me. It was just very quiet and mm -hmm. sports focused, had two younger brothers, still have two younger brothers. <laughs> um, it's good. It's interesting to talk about childhood because uh, like when... Or when you read about some trans people or you read about some transition stories, there's a lot of like stories about I've known since I was like three right. or known since I was four. And mm -hmm. I don't know that I have the same story. And a lot of reasons is possibly because I didn't know about the existence of trans people. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up. I went to Catholic schools. I went to church. And there certainly just was not the education around what a trans person was and there was a real lack of education around it and so it's not that i knew i was trans since mm -hmm. i was a kid i felt okay in my body i didn't feel great there was a lot of moments where i would look at my body and try to like imagine myself in other bodies i would dress up in women's clothing a mm -hmm. lot too so there were there were things that would happen but again without knowing what this possibility was it was really difficult for me to kind of put any understanding on things and right. that continued for a lot of my life like into my late 20s probably even 30s i mean there just really wasn't a lot of material put in front of me as to what a trans person was or the existence mm -hmm. of trans people and i think that's really how childhood and young adulthood went for me it was just a lived a a boy life right? mm -hmm. <laughs> just playing right. playing sports being quiet doing school you know having a few friends and that was pretty much it for me not making a ton of new friends outside of high school didn't make friends in university and stuff and then eventually when i met like my co-parent and uh we had kids we wanted to make sure that we raised kids with a full wealth of information around like the queer community. And it was at that point that I started to, to understand everything around me as well. So as I was raising kids, started to see more about myself. Were you identifying as queer at that point? Not originally, no, not. It was fairly early. We had already been married and uh -huh. had kids. And then that's when I kind of came out as, yeah. Right. Pansexual is the first step of my kind of uh -huh. queer journey, but I love the I love the steps, yeah. the coming out steps. Yeah. I have a, I had a lot of them. <laughs> yes, exactly, and that's <laughs> that's the one thing I talk about now is I I've just stopped even pretending there will be an end to it because right. th there will be more steps. I'm now sure of it. I don't right. know what they will be, but I am almost positive there will be more steps in, along my journey. So. That's across the board for everyone, right? I mm -hmm. mean, we're constantly changing. And I think exactly. that that's a big, important lesson that we can learn from the queer community and the trans community in, mm -hmm. in particular. But it's interesting because I recently interviewed um, a woman named Bethany Grace Howe. She came out at the age of 47. And she said basically the same as you, like she had no inkling 
right. as, you yeah. know, growing like her whole life all the way up to 47. And this is a really um, common occurrence. It's not always like so obvious and like in your face and you know yeah. it right away. It's not. I think Bethany said she read a study where it was like 30, like 33% of people don't know it until like there's like an event that happened. Like basically sure. for her, yeah. the event was she saw Caitlyn Jenner on the cover of a magazine and mm -hmm. that triggered in her, oh, that's me. I'm trans. You know, it's really interesting when you think about it. And I had no idea I was queer growing mm -hmm. up either. Right. So there's so many layers to this. I know. Not to yeah. take away from your experience by bringing yeah. in my queer yeah. coming out. And I hope that that didn't come across that way. No. And I think it's the important part for trans people and queer people, like, is that we listen to one another's stories as well, right? So it's not right. that just that everyone else listens to our stories. It's that we understand one another's stories as well, because it was really hard for me in the early parts of my transition when I just assumed that everyone had this really easy transition and that right. once you once you finally came to terms with being trans, that everything was going to be easier. Like mm. that you'd, you'd hit this point and things would be like, I'm me now. And it, it's not really that way in, in my transition. Like things are still really hard as I move through things. Like it wasn't like coming to this understanding and then being like, I'm free. Like everything right. is, everything yeah. is easy now. Like there's still a lot of really difficult parts. Like I've come to an understanding that's more comfortable for me, but I still deal with a lot of dysphoria and I still mm -hmm. deal with a lot of things that come with the understanding that I am trans and now there's a lot of hard things that come with it. And because there are a lot of hard things that come with it, there's a lot of kind of sadness, I guess, as well. And it, it it's harder to deal with that if you have to keep that to yourself is what I've kind of mm. come to realize. And it's mm -hmm. it's difficult to have to think I am trans, but I can't talk about the hard parts of being trans because that will invalidate everything, right? So mm. it's it's difficult to kind of move through some of the parts in my life right now, thinking if I talk about this, people will say, maybe you're not trans then, or maybe, you know, so it, it's been hard to kind of move through different pieces while still knowing I am trans. And, right. and this is, so it's it's been a really difficult kind of process as well. And I think that's why it's important that we all kind of listen to one another's stories as well mm -hmm. as other people understand that it is difficult, but it's also beautiful at the same mm -hmm. time that there are mm -hmm. so many different layers to it all. So I think it's it's hugely important for everyone to understand those kind of intricacies to everyone's because there are people that do know from the age of three and right and are able to get that transition help in their teens yeah. and why I think it's so important that we do support the kids that do know this stuff. Uh -huh. I think that also, you know, like it's human nature to want to put people in a box and tie it up, you know, and okay, you're trans. So this is your track, right? Yeah. You're a lesbian. So this is your track. Wait a second, but you don't look like a lesbian. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's really unfathomable because we have these preconceived notions in these boxes of what everything is. And that's why I think the queer community in particular is going to change the world because just by our sheer nature of being, we yep. don't fit these boxes. Yeah. But that's, it's a tough road. It's hard. It is. Yeah, it is for sure. Yeah. And then you're faced with backlash from people who just don't understand it and say stupid shit. Exactly. And and it and that's every day, right? And that's right. That's all the time. And, and now it's it's not necessarily every day the mean stuff directly to you right. if you stay in your house every day. Um, but <laughs> even there it is certainly safe. it is it's gotten to the point where it's it's now impossible to not see hard, difficult stuff about the queer community every single day. And not just mm. mean things but like legislative difficult yeah. things every day. It's not even just random white guy on the internet being mean anymore. It is now political leaders <laughs> yeah. being, being. Being, being mean. And, in, and evil, right? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, it, is really, it is really difficult to, to just go about your workday 
when, yeah, when it's yeah, impossible totally. to, 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 to get through an entire day without seeing something like that. So Right. And having to just keep getting up every day mm-hmm. and putting one foot in front of the other and being yeah. brave. I mean, it, it's... That's why representation matters so much. Yeah. That's why visibility matters so yeah. much. We can talk for days on the shit that's going down in this country and yep. around the world. And I think yep. we probably will circle back to it many times in this conversation <laughs> because it really is scary times. But I want to take it to you met your partner. You were living a that hetero life. Mm-hmm. Was it a it was a hetero relationship? I don't know what yep. to call it, like a not a non-queer relationship. <laughs> And then you said, and then you had kids and then you said, we wanted to make sure they knew about the LGBTQ community basically. Right. So where did that come from? And I would love to hear about that. My partner at the time worked at Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And so we were immersed in like sex positive education and everything. And so we had all these great sex educators around us. My partner was a great sex educator and there was really no question in our minds that we wanted to raise our kids i mean even with really basic things such as like using proper terms for like anatomy and everything Mm -hmm. right so oh you mean don't say you're tutu (laughs) exactly so everything was (laughs) it was like really basic like yeah parenting stuff for us to to have the kids who would be in school, like as four and five year olds, like correcting teachers who were, you know, like felt it you couldn't use words like vulva and this right. penis and stuff. And so it was for us really important to have up to date sexual and health education information that we would use to teach our kids. And again, because we had so many amazing friends who were in the sexual education field it was around us all the time that we Mm -hmm. would have conversations around these things and so and at the time as well because of where i work i'm able to take courses here as well and so i started taking courses in like the women and gender studies program Mm -hmm. and so i started taking courses in um, like masculinities and some of the intro courses here for women and gender studies and so i was just starting to take more courses, and <laughs> getting a better understanding about feminism and everything uh-huh. and everything that I was learning uh, and teaching my kids about really just gave me more insight into one, how to talk to my kids and how to be a human mm-hmm. myself and yeah. like how to break down kind of the way I was socialized as like a boy and uh-huh. how to kind of move out of how I was socialized as a boy and to kind of break down once you start breaking that down kind of understand more about myself and that Mm -hmm. kind of led me to some revelations over time so so again i talked about how first came out as pansexual but then a few years later i think it was came out as Mm non-binary and then it was a couple of years ago i guess that moved a little further further along the the transition path yeah And I think that when I came out as non-binary, I knew that that was what I had hoped to eventually move towards, but I just Uh didn't have it, have it in me to come out and say at that point in time. So, right. So you, you did it in, in baby steps. I did it in baby steps. I did it in what felt okay for me to do at the time. So, which is totally 100% awesome. Right. And if that's how you have to come out, that's how you come out. Exactly. Exactly. Totally way. encourage everyone to do if hey, if people feel comfortable coming out as quickly and as fast as right. as they would like, then that's what they should do. And as slowly as they would like, then that's what they should do. So Exactly. I know it took me like ten years. There there yeah. were lots of baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> so many yep. baby steps. Exactly. Even though I was living a lesbian life the whole time, I still was yeah. not I wasn't fully lesbian. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. So So you have this revelation and, you know, you start having revelations, I should say. It's not, wasn't just one revelation. And then obviously you talk to your family about this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, can you like walk through that? Like how did the conversation go and what was it like for you? And I know you can't speak to your partner's experience of it, you know, because you're not in their head, but. Yeah. I mean, it was well-received. I have a very supportive 
family. Mm -hmm. The kids were also, again, because it's the other bonus of raising kids to uh, one, know what being trans is, to Mm -hmm. understand the importance of support for trans people and like that coming out as trans doesn't change the person and everything. And so, I mean, my kids were the biggest kind of, especially my youngest daughter, like the biggest supporter of uh, oh, I like love that. name change and pronoun change and everything. So it's no, it's no thing to them. It is no, no thing at all. No. Right. How exactly. old were your kids at the time? So they're 13 and 11 now. So they were probably like 10 and 8 around uh-huh. the time that pronouns started changing and everything. So, yeah, for them, it was just a natural change. Now, the one thing that was a, a bit more difficult for them was moving away from like a term like dad. For right. some reason, was a bit more difficult. So they just call me by my name now. And so. Oh, wow. OK. So we were able to find like and I don't care i'm not some again there's another thing like you can call me by my name that's totally fine i don't we kind of just worked together to find out what was most comfortable for all of us and i Mm -hmm. just didn't want to be called dad anymore it wasn't that i wanted to be called mom Mm is that i didn't want to be called dad so we worked together to find like a compromise for what was comfortable for everybody and these are the things that were kind of like helpful for our family i love it and we i talk about that a lot on this show you know like we come up with our names because, yep. like I said, we're not in the box. And yep. so it's so funny, the names. Not funny, fa- not funny, haha, but just like it's so interesting, the names that every single family I interview, we have yeah. so many different names totally. for yeah. ourselves with the kids. And I love it. Like, And when you think of like the traditional idea of like, can't call me by my name because it's not respectful or anything, but it right. shows so much more respect to me that we sat down and worked through what works for us all who call me than it does to kind of demand that my kids call me by a specific thing that I've chosen or something. Mm-hmm. So it was it was so much more meaningful to me that we spent time together coming up with something that was valuable and comfortable for all of us than to kind of like command that something must be used by them for me so right so intentional very much so yeah just intentional i'll say it a million times on this show there is so much intention in our family definitely all right so they call you m they were like super cool with it partner was totally cool and like it sounds like a pretty good scenario yep as things go it really was a lot of support in my family, like my parents as well, have been very supportive. Go ahead, parents. You go ahead with your bad selves, parents. And they have been excellent, you know, but learning, like continually learning and everything. And they actually gave me my new middle name and everything. So I uh... sat down with Andrea, who's my co-parent. So Andrea and I are now separated okay but continue to co-parent together gotcha closely. i've been calling i've been calling andrea your your partner my bad yeah and okay. i mean yeah so andrea and i are still very close um and co-parent together and we it was andrea and i who helped come up with my name mm-hmm. because i was named after my father my middle name i offered them the opportunity to come up with my middle name. And so they oh. re-middle named me as well. So they gave me the middle name Hope, which was one that they had had for me. So Aww. it was like a full family participation event. So I yeah, love it. it was great. We'll be right back. Queer Family Podcast. All right, folks. You know, every once in a while with our LGBTQIA plus family stories, there is, is someone who really does just fall pregnant the natural way, but that's not usually the case with our families. And so I have something special for you. I have a promo code for any of you in the market for a little bit of sperm. <laughs> And it's the same cryobank that I made my babies with. It's California Cryobank. Full service sperm bank, y'all. And for over 45 years, which is a long time, California Cryobank has proudly helped tens of thousands of LGBTQ 
IA plus clients create the families of their dreams, including many who've been on this show, including myself. And they are the number one sperm bank in the U.S. They ship to over 40 countries. They have one of the largest and most diverse selection of sperm donors, which I love. I sometimes just love to go shopping and see what's, what's out there nowadays. I do. Do y'all do that? I do. Anyway, and if you want to do that, use this code. You're just going to visit cryobank.com and you're going to use code QUEERFAM and that's going to get you a free level two subscription to their donor catalog. That's huge. That's a, that's a lot of money. Also, it can be used towards a level three subscription. So you'll get a discount on that as well. So go do that. Go look and see what's out there. Maybe you're ready to make that family. Let's make some babies, y'all. And then come on the show and tell me about it. Thank you so much. I love hearing your stories. <laughs> Queer fam. Code Queer fam. California Cryobank. <laughs> love is love. I want to get into because you were you were starting to talk about your your name change and and the mm-hmm. chose, your chosen name and you you had a thing you were going to talk about but before we say that I want to just first just say like my mom baby boomer in her seventies wonderful ally like listens to every episode you know is like right there but the one she has the most trouble with wrapping her head around in like fully understanding is non-binary or gender right. non-conforming. Yeah. It's yeah. really hard for her. And it sounds like your parents are doing a good job. Yes, they are. For for someone like my mom who's still just like, I just I don't I don't understand and why and blah, 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 asking, you know, asking all kinds of questions. Is there anywhere you can point folks who really, really want to understand it but are still grappling with understanding? I would probably have to ask my mom, you know, yeah. <laughs> like where, yeah. like what resources have been, have been best. Cause my mom has done, I think the one thing that I've appreciated a lot has been that they've done a lot of their own research as well. Like they haven't really used me as the go-to for everything. Because again, that is something that can get, I don't mind answering questions a lot, mm-hmm. but it can get tiring of course to be and like here the, i am asking you all the questions <laughs> well i mean i have volunteered into this yes. situation okay yes that's true but it's like sometimes can be difficult to be like the the go to for mm-hmm. for information on all things and it's been nice to not have to to do that all the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. and i think i mean for my own understanding of a lot of things i use instagram <laughs> like i basically <laughs> i follow people uh-huh and and listen to what they're sharing and i think that for me to if i if i get to a point where i don't really understand why someone is doing things the way they're doing and maybe just look at it as like a what what is the impact on on me <laughs> like yes and there there tends to be no impact on me when exactly. things are happening. Exactly. And so it's like, they look very happy. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I may not understand why this is happening, why they are doing this. There's no impact. Wonderful. I yes. will move on. And so I think a lot of times too, there's the, maybe I don't understand something here. Is there a need for me to move on? Like, What's the more important thing here? Is right. it for me to just move forward? If they're asking for support, I can do that. But for the most part, they're just sharing something happy and good. Right. And I, there's no need for me to understand more. Yes. Except they're happy. Maybe it's maybe it's not for you to understand, right? Maybe exactly. Yeah. That's what I that's what I tell her. I say, Mom, you just listen to what people tell you and you believe them. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Right? You don't have to think any more about it. Exactly. And I think a lot of the time <laughs> that's maybe my best answer for things is Yeah. You you maybe understand it as best as you need to right now. Yeah. And also I love what you said. How does it impact you in any right. way? Yep. Right? That's yep. a really wonderful point to bring up. Yeah. That's a good way to make decisions too, I think. Like in general. <laughs> exactly. Now, <laughs> like some of the people that I don't understand do have an impact on me because they're really mean people who are yes. actively yes. hurting our communities and stuff. And so mm-hmm. in those cases, I try to do a bit more understanding and often I I can't understand miseducation, you know, no. lack of understanding and everything. But but in these kind of cases, there is no impact on me. So it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. Have, I love, have I fun love doing that. the thing that you enjoy doing. I'm going to add it's that. It's not hurting people. So Right. Yeah. yeah. 
It's a good way to figure out if you're on the right path. Is it hurting anyone? Exactly. I like to think of it that way. So, yeah. So you and your co-parent ended up separating. Yeah. When did you start your transition? What age were you? Maybe 41. I'm trying to to separate. This is another thing that I find difficult is separating when transition actually started. And so because it's like a social transition, maybe around 41 and with hormone replacement therapy around 42, I think. So so 41, 42 in my early 40s is probably Mm -hmm. the most accurate response. I'm just coming up on two years on hormone replacement therapy. I guess. Okay. So, congrats. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a, a great journey. So that's awesome. I'm happy so, yes. for you. So now you are co-parenting yep. and how's it all working out for you now? You're, you're a parent, you have two children, you have a co-parent. What's it like being a queer parent out here? I also live with my current wonderful partner, Hannah. Okay. Hannah. Uh, yeah. Our kids are currently with me. So we do have a like a 50-50 split time where, I mean, we live like eight minutes apart. So we're still, we're still living close. But yeah, kids at Mm -hmm. this minute in time are with us. And it's still fairly new. I mean, this has been for a few months. It's new getting to, you know, like follow these schedules and figuring out rooms and decorating rooms and getting kids to follow chore schedules yeah. and Ugh. everything. Yeah, the struggle is real. The struggle yeah, is real. Because with 13 and 11-year-olds, there's different levels of wanting to do things at different times of days. So it's been like learning for everyone. It's been adjusting for everyone. There's also well, like eight, eight different cats combined in the mix. <laughs> so it's like a- a girl. cats there everywhere. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And so it's... <laughs> Like I said, there's lots of like moving pieces to it and lots of adjustment to it. And Mm -hmm. I think like everyone involved in it is like trying to make everything work as part of it, make it work for the kids and then for the adults as well. Like, I mean, there's lots of trying to make sure that adults feel comfortable in this as well. I mean, obviously for children, but also to make sure that in such a big change, things feel okay for adults with such a huge shift in how people right. are living as well. So, yeah. Right. I mean, it's not just one transition, right? It's There's a lot no. of transitions. Exactly. <laughs> happening. Yeah. There's exactly your transition and then your kids' transitions and your co-parents' transitions and your partner's transitions. And there's a lot going on for there's sure. A lot of so. the, and then your cats, like forget about I it. I know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we've had to like merge different cat families together and everything so it's gone it's gone interestingly but they're all adjusting quite well so that's good so what's it like what's it like parenting now you know now you're a queer parent what's it been like how's it going and from that lens of being a queer parent we're also parents to a trans child which is also an interesting element to it all as you watch like legislation come in that's so oh my god aggressively anti kids growing up so scary and because that kind of thing is is taking root in Canada as well and it's very difficult to watch as a parent and as a trans person again like i mentioned before my kids have been so amazing as mm-hmm. part of my transition and my kids are often the ones educating their <laughs> friends on what a trans mm-hmm. person is. And mm-hmm. as someone who is, I can not often what would be termed like a passing trans woman. But there's a lot of like education that goes on for my kids and specifically my youngest daughter who does most of the educating for her friends. My youngest daughter is very outgoing. And so mm-hmm. when kids will say things to her when they misgender me charlotte speaks up every time um and so it's like wow there's a lot of advocating that goes on on charlotte's part which is both heartwarming and it's also really hard to watch it's a little bit of everything because it's nice to see and it's also crappy to know that if school boards just had better education, she wouldn't be responsible for so much. Yeah. She wouldn't have to do the advocating. Can you imagine a world, you know, where our kids don't have to 
it would be so nice. Yeah. <laughs> for, I mean, it would be nice for me for sure. Yeah. But it would also be so be so much less work for for Every, her for everyone. Every, it, everyone, right? Yeah. And so when we see so many protests taking part and taking place, the basic education about the existence of humans is <sighs> is grooming kids. That it's like all of this stuff is just. It's some days it's hard to get out of bed <laughs> when it's when you see these kind of things. So it's really heavy, and I can see that it's heavy on you. Yeah, it's heavy as all hell, and it, yeah, it, it's awful, right? And we're forgetting about the humanity of the people behind it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now it's you know in these legislative you know bills on a piece of paper, and exactly, yeah, and I think that's that's become like the difficult part is that it's become harder to separate who it is <laughs> that's kind of thinking this way because it's it's now people in charlotte's it's families in charlotte's classroom who are you know like it, it's people who are close to us who are thinking this way and everything now so it used to just be like when i was on twitter it would be people who were yeah just being angry at, at me and it was easier to kind of just sweep it off as being like, mm -hmm. okay, whatever. But right. now we can put like thesis to some of this stuff. And it's just like, ugh, this is not, this is not quite as fun anymore. It's a little bit harder to kind of brush it aside when you can identify people a little more easily as to who is thinking this way about you and your family. And it's just, a, it's, it just weighs a bit heavier, like you mentioned. So yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. And yeah. I honestly, you know, I'm over here in the States and I didn't realize it had spread so much in Canadia, as I like to call mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I didn't know it it was getting as bad as it sounds like it is yeah. here. This is my fear. It's this this is this stuff is spreading like wildfire. Yeah. It's misinformation and it's ignorance and it's really scary. It is. <laughs> and it's yeah. life threatening. It is literally life threatening. Yep. It is. You had a beautiful post. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about a post again. You had a beautiful yeah. post where you had your medicines lined up, mm -hmm. your your hormone. Yep. It was what you wrote that I think a, a tear came to my eye. I'm not even kidding. I can't remember exactly what you were, and I don't want to butcher it, but it was something to the effect of, I need this. This makes me me. I don't remember what you said. Yeah. I don't know if you remember it, but it was beautifully written. And I feel like you need to like speak in Congress or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was about those moments too, about like trying to be trying to be aware of those moments for myself as well and not taking them for granted. Because I can I can forget myself just how important having access to those medications are for me. Mm. And it's I take all of those pills like twice a day. And it's, it's so important to have access to those things. I mean, I still pay, a, this is even with some coverage for them, I still paid a decent amount of money for those medications. And it's yeah. like, it's difficult, the amount of like the limited access there is to trans healthcare is crappy. And this is in this healthcare utopia of Canada, right? So, mm -hmm. or Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> like it's, um, there is some coverage in some places for medication and there are some provinces where there's some gender affirming surgery coverage, not, not where I am for sure, mm -hmm. but like it's, it's really difficult to, to get access to a lot of the things that some, not all trans people would like to have access to. Right. And we deserve access to everything that yeah. we would like access to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Everybody yeah. does. Everybody yeah. deserves it. Right. Yeah. And for those who, because I've gotten comments like this, you know, like for those who think that the more we talk about this stuff and the more we allow this stuff, the more we're going to make the children like us. Yeah. Turn the kids gay. Turn the yes. kids trans because we're being visible. Yep. The argument that they are they're pushing there, it, like it's so hard to argue against it because they have their like ridiculous, ridiculous statistics, and now there's more trans people than ever, and it's because you yes, know exactly. we're 
we're allowing them to, you know, we're allowing these groomers to make the rest of them trans too. And that's, you know, that's not the case. No, it's just, you know, what is probably the case is there are a lot more LGBTQ people in the world than any of you even realize. Yeah. Uh, There are still probably way more who can't come out, can't share their truth than who can. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, it's that really basic kind of meme or phrase of no one is trying to turn your straight kid trans or trying to keep trans kids alive right yeah. so and and it's it's really it's such a basic premise that there's it's so annoying and if that yeah. argument were really the case then i'd be straight right now because i watched romancing the stone as a kid yeah. and i watched every single movie that had yeah. a straight romance in it i'm still yeah. not straight Exactly. Didn't work, right? So it's really infuriating. And and I brought that up just because, you know, you are trans, you are a tra- trans parent, and you have a trans child. And in the States, right now, in some states, your child can get taken away from you mm-hmm. for yeah. allowing it, you yeah, know? Exactly. And then and then also having you be trans yourself. Like, where do we draw the line here? Where yeah. are we where's the line? The line is never gonna get drawn because mm-hmm. this is a really slippery, scary, awful slope that we're headed down yeah. if if we don't change this um, yeah. world more positively. There are places in the States that we could not travel to as a family. Right. Like it, it's, we just couldn't go anymore. I mean, that's Mm-mm. just, and it's not really, and it's got to the point where it's not just, we couldn't go out of political choice. We now just couldn't go out of right. safety. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it, it's as, Canadians too. We 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 can't think that that's not happening here either. Because it's for about the second time in a month, we have this thing called the One Million Parents March coming to uh, to protest all of the education and all of the save our children kind oh of education in our schools, and oh it's like nationwide. And so it's like it's oh it's God. here, like it's happening. We just are you know, one uh, yeah. election away from it all happening again. So, scary. so yeah. So scary. I'm not, I'm knocking wood. I am knocking yeah. wood. I'm, I am literally yeah. knocking wood right now. Yeah. So like, I don't expect us to have a solution to this because no. obviously if we had one, we'd be doing, I mean, we, I think we are doing it. And I think, I think so. Yeah. The only solution we can do at this point is to be visible and to be brave and to represent. And I think you, are doing a just wonderful job of it. I'm just happy that to know you and happy to know you're out there and and being you. And you is beautiful. And Thank you. I am grateful for you. And Thank we you. all should be. The whole the whole <laughs> fucking world. <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> we'll just continue talking and sharing these things, right? So Yeah. These conversations deserve a, a bigger seat at the table. Yeah. They do. Right? They really do. And so until these conversations are really the the bigger conversations, the real honest and true conversations, then we got a long road ahead of us. Yep. Sadly. God, this was supposed to be like up this is always uplifting. (laughs) 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 But your kids are doing amazingly. Yes. Right? I do agree. Yeah, and 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 you're doing great, and um, you're changing the world, Em. We are. <laughs> we are. I don't know. I don't know if I am, but uh, you are, and I appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you? And you have a podcast, too, so let's talk about that. Because of my, what I like to call, iffy mental health, <laughs> I, oh, well. I, I'm able to do my podcast only when my brain allows me to. Got it. It's basically just an extension of really, I've kind of cut my social media down just to Instagram, which Mm -hmm. is the M Reynolds right now. It's really just a discussion around different elements of what I've called a second puberty for me. It's around kind of what we've talked about a little bit today. Some of the expected and unexpected parts of transition. Mm -hmm. And so it's... 
Again, documenting some of the the difficult social aspects and physical aspects, talking about what it's like to transition later in life, some of the good parts of that, some of the difficult parts of that. And really just, I mean, it's it's lighthearted sometimes, it's heavy sometimes, it's Mm -hmm. sometimes both in the same Mm -hmm. really short episode, but it's a lot of the time, it's really often just for me to be able to document a lot of my own thoughts and feelings on things that can be really difficult if I don't have places to share them. And so if I can't share them in like an Instagram caption, I like to be able to write them out or talk Mm -hmm. them out sometimes. So that's kind of where they go. Is that what how the account started? Amazingly, the Instagram account started as a fatherhood (laughs) account. Oh, shifted over time I, I, and I didn't even delete I have not deleted anything from before so I didn't know that yeah oh. so it started as a dad talking feminism account and then was as you dad do. who cross stitches account and it just kind of <laughs> slowly sh- you, so you can basically see a transition through my account it. it was that is yeah. amazing yeah so that's really how the Instagram account started and did they stay with you at, through, like, mm, not all of them? Yeah, some did, some didn't. I mean, interesting. kind of the way it goes, right? But yeah, we were very progressive with our kids and the way we talked about our kids. So it's not like there was a all at once drop off or anything. Growth has been slower as a trans person <laughs> than as Inch- a progressive oh. father. Interesting. Sure. But, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, that's infuriating. And also, okay, everybody, go follow... The M Reynolds, it's E-M-M-E-R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. You got it. I got, got it. it the right M Reynolds. Go fall right now and put some yeah. love up there because yeah. God knows we all need that love because, yeah. you know, like really for every one loving comment we get, we get maybe three hateful ones, <laughs> you know? So especially if you're on YouTube, don't go to YouTube. Oh, Those people God, are, yeah. They're like piranhas. They're yeah. insane. They're yeah. assholes. Excuse my. Fr- I've been swearing a lot. I'm sorry, Em. Hey, no, that's. that's <laughs> I in my dad blogging days, I wrote a post about why we let our kids swear. So this is a. Oh, is I can a, read that. Yeah, that was a. I think that one was on Yahoo or something. So yeah, well, you got to learn yeah. how to use them responsibly, right? You got to yeah. learn how to that's use what, the swears. That's what the post was about. Yeah. Yeah, if you use them responsibly and you put them in the right mm-hmm. place, they have a time exactly. and a place. They yep. really do. But don't just like, you know. Using swears, but not towards people and stuff, right? So it was right. Like, but swearing and, can be really valuable. Oh, I don't know God, how I would operate without swears. Yeah, so. it feels good. It feels yeah. good sometimes exactly. to say a good F-bomb. Like just drop that F-bomb. It, it, makes, it just makes the point. essential to my communication often. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. This has been really such a pleasure. It really has been. The name of your podcast is called a second yep. puberty um, and so go listen to the episodes and they drop when they drop and that's yep. and we love that exactly that's the perfect way to say it yeah. <laughs> well thank you so much Em um, yes thank you I am looking forward to seeing to reading more of your posts awesome Queer Family Podcast a special thanks once again to our sponsor California Cryobank don't forget y'all use that code QueerFam Q-U-E-E-R-F-A-M for a free level two subscription to their donor catalog. Go make those babies, y'all, and then come tell me about it. (laughs) Go make them. Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) Love is love. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, feel free to listen to another or watch another. I have so many episodes for your listening or viewing pleasure. Just go pick one and, and enjoy. There's a lot. There really is. And also, if you really do like this show, please, I know I say it all the time, but please do consider supporting the show on Patreon. You're just going to go to patreon.com slash the queer family podcast. You're going to pick a tier. You're going to join and you're going to get that bonus content. And you're also going to get my love and adoration for the rest of my life. (laughs) I love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Keep on tuning in and I'll see you next time. Mwah. 